the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us call to mind our shortcomings and failures. Ask God's pardon and forgiveness for the worthy celebration of this most holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you came to call us sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full of lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and uh, ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, as an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors, 
and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. 
our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one, third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The rise of humanism was a radical shift from the thinking of the medieval world. In the medieval world, God, God was the center of the world. Or we can say a God-centered world. You know, you just uh, drive into any of our towns. They'll say, drive to independence. You see our church, big, beautiful, magnificent. You know, people, those who visit me, I will say, you just drive in, you can never miss it. And then everything comes around it. But humanism simply says, Human beings are capable of solving all their problems. They do not need any help from natural or superpowers. You know, you drive into Chicago or New York, you see the skyscrapers. It's no more the cathedral which is the center of the city. So the humanism thought that God is limiting your freedom as a human being. When you believe in God, that makes you a less human. But the liturgy of today gives us just the opposite theme. When you believe in God, when you walk in the ways of God, that makes the best version of you. Why did the liturgy say so? Let's go back to the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis says, you and I, we are created in the image a likeness of God. Human beings are not just one of the creatures in the world. 
So since we are created in the image or likeness of God, God had a purpose. And what was the purpose? God said three things. Rain, rule, and fruitful. And God embraced Adam and Eve, the first parents, with the Garden of Eden. And the first parents supposed to Edenize the whole world. Taking care of the garden. Now we know the story. They went away from God. Humanity went away from God and God's purpose has been defeated. We'll listen to the first reading of today. Book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs Proverb speaks about a perfect wife. The author speaks about three qualities. One who walk in the ways of God. One who is generous and have a heart for the poor. A perfect wife is the one who will um, so meet the purpose of God's design. We'll listen to the beautiful Psalm, Psalm 127. The psalmist says, blessed are those who fear the Lord. You know, that's, a, that's an English translation, okay, fear the Lord. That, you know, when we translate one language to another, we don't get exactly the real meaning. But the Hebrew meaning is, when we come in the presence of God, we feel that, oh, in front of him. Or we respect God. Or we acknowledge God as the author of the universe. And when we acknowledge God as the author of the universe, walks in his ways, the psalmist says, those are the people, those who prosper. In the gospel passage, Jesus gives a beautiful parable. I read the, sh the short version of it. You know, the, the entire parable is almost two pages. Once again, the first two, one who received five talents and three talents, they placed their trust and confidence in the master. The parable said, traded with it. Was willing to work hard. Was willing to take the chance. And ready to let go of the talent that their master gave. And the result? They became prosperous. Now look at the third portion. So the third portion looked within himself. And he said, I knew that you are a terrible person. You pick up from what you have not scattered. So you reap what you have not sown. That's one of the reasons when human beings go away from God. Now when we have what do you call it, when 
when live when I live only for me it becomes my world everything has to come around me I demand respect people have to acknowledge me people have to accept me it's everything about the other because I am the center of the universe but when God comes into our lives we are reminded of our responsibility the fundamental responsibility you know God comes to Cain and asked him a question where is your brother Cain answered God by asking him another question. Am I my brother's keeper? For you and for me as Christians, we have a responsibility towards our brothers and sisters. because we are all created in the image a likeness of God I'm not a separate entity when you and I when we walk in the ways of God that's what we can become better human beings now look at, into the lives of great saints you know saints who live in our own times like John Paul the Great our mother Teresa they all completely and totally dedicated their lives to God that did not make them less human beings that made them great human beings St. Augustine would say, we are created for God. And when we walk in the ways of God, that, that's where we can enjoy the freedom in its fullest. The liturgy of today invites you and me to walk in the ways of God. So that we can become the best version of ourselves. Please rise. We shall pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is new. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, but for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken to the prophets I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church 
I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God took God to be good stewards. Let us bring our needs and prayer to the to the whole need, needs of our prayer for the whole human family. May the church never hide nor hoard her gifts, but may she use wisely and generously the talents the master has entrusted to her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May nations of goodwill continue to work together to keep humanity safe from wars, violence, and terrorism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish, our family of faith, may we be generous with the gifts that the Lord has given us and learn to use them wisely for the common good of all creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that the Spirit will bring healing to the ill, shelter to the vulnerable, and perseverance to those working on a vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering and those who have asked for prayers, especially for Kevin and Alana Cobble, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the faithful departed, especially for Clarence, Dorothy, and deceased family members for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Most holy and generous God, may we will live each day as good and faithful servants as disciples of Jesus Christ and be good stewards of your gifts to us. We ask this through Christ uh, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, uh, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ uh, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity. May the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, may to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis Hart Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in a mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy in us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Of the service command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thou will be done, O earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. A lead us now to temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and uh, ever. Amen. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. We'll now pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen. If there's any cars in the parking lot that are listening to 90.1 and would like to receive communion, please honk your horn when you see the Eucharistic minister exit the elevator doors.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ uh, our Lord. Amen. We shall pray together the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. A couple of reminders before the five blessings. Please join us for a parish Advent mission, which begins on Sunday, November 29th. It is sponsored by the Diocese of La Crosse. The talks are given by the diocesan priest and Bishop Callahan. Check this week's bulletin for details. There's a change in day or location than what's in the bulletin. We will meet on Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. and here in this church. Everyone is welcome. Those who wish to participate at home can find the presentations on the diocesan website, diolc.org slash advent. And a reminder about our annual appeal, so please send in your pledges and the gifts as early as possible. And we have the Christmas mass time, the unusual time. The bishop has allowed us to begin the vigil mass at 2 p.m. So we will have mass 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. at St. John's and 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. here at um, St. Peter and Paul. So this will give you enough opportunities to choose the timing of your choice as well as everyone can participate. And then Christmas Day Masses as usual, 8.15 a.m. at St. John's and 10.15 a.m. here at SSPP. And the next Saturday, 21st, November 21st, there will be a 7 p.m. Mass for the Hunters. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. So thank you everyone for being part of this Eucharistic celebration. We thank those who join us through the live stream and those who later participate through YouTube. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.